Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made the clothes for these two characters, as well as how I made this turntable animation, which I used to demonstrate their new clothing. Remember, if you like this video or if it was helpful, consider giving me a like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments if you want to see something else. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I isolate the female Minotaur, and I use Retopoflow to trace the body. And this is how I start the clothing. You can do this in Base Blender without any add-ons, but Retopoflow makes it a lot faster for me. So I just trace the shape of the body in general, filling all of the gaps and trying to keep everything as a quad and relatively smooth topology and even spaced um, edges. So now Retopoflow has created this mesh for me, which I can start to um, edit and cut planes out of to make the clothing. So here you can see I'm just deleting some planes to make the geometry more interesting. And then throughout this editing process, you can see that I symmetrize the model, which is a super helpful command in edit mode. Um, you can do some edits on one side and then symmetrize, say, plus x direction to minus x direction, and it'll copy the changes you've made to the other side of the model. So in this part, I have just been brushing the hair down underneath the clothing so that it doesn't stick through. So here is the bottom part of the clothes for the female. I started it the exact same way. And here you can see I'm just adding some loops that I am going to use to tie these little gold chains to. And here I'm using a path and just drawing it around on the character. So this will be like a little gold chain that will hang on her body. So I duplicate and modify three of those for her legs. And then I build a few of them for her back that are supposed to look like they kind of hold up the clothes. So these are just paths that I am manipulating in edit mode. And they're not simulated and they don't have any sort of like soft body physics on them. They could. But I will show in a minute that you don't need them just to make them animated with the character. So once I have all of the chains built, I use the mirror modifier to copy them to the other side. That way they line up exactly the same. And then I use a circle to define the shape or the cross section, if you will, of the paths to give them more of a flat shape. And I applied that shape to all of the chains. And then I give them a simple gold material, which is just um, a darker gold color with metallic and a few other shader node settings turned on. These ones I didn't give a actual chain texture to, although I could. And you'll see how I texture the rest of the clothing in Substance Painter soon. So once I have these chains kind of set up the way I want them, I came and sculpted the body hairs around where the chains sit. The hairs and the chains will both follow the animation, so knocking the hairs down along these paths made the, um, made the hair look like the chains had pushed it down. And you can kind of see that effect right now. So once all that is done, 
I got everything parented to the rig. So the clothes itself is just um, weight painted with automatic weights. And then you can tweak it. Otherwise you can uh, data transfer modifier to copy the weight paints over to the clothing. And that is what I had to do for the chains. So for each chain, I added a data transfer modifier and selected the body, the actual character's body as the target. And what that did is it allows the chains to follow the body with the same weight paint that the body has. So basically they mimic the rig in the same way that um, the skin of the body does so that they don't stretch. And then here I'm just showing, adjusting the weight paints for the actual cloth part of the clothes so that um, they deform properly. You can see it's kind of working already. The chains are sticking to the body. There's a little bit of stretching happening, but a little extra weight paint fixed that issue. So once it looks like it's working, I enter edit mode and I select um, certain strips and UV unwrap this object so that I can send it to Substance Painter. So you can see that the, the different materials that I've made by selecting and assigning different materials in Blender become different parts of this model. So in Substance Painter, I can just add materials to certain parts easily without having to manually paint them. So here I've just added a leather material with a different color for the top band and some seams. Now back in Blender, I click on the principal shader and hit Control Shift T and go and navigate to the exported texture files from Substance and apply them to the mesh. And I do the exact same process <laughs> where I UV unwrap the shirt and then I can add materials to each one of the parts separately. So I added this kind of woven leather material to the shirt with, um, it's kind of like padded goat hide, I think. And then some gold chains just to match our other chains. So same thing for each one of these materials, control shift T on the principal shader on the slot that the material is um, supposed to go on. And Blender will keep the material separate so you don't have to redefine how they are applied. Okay, so now the exact same process with the male minotaur. I trace the body and for this one, I leave a um, a gap in the front and back because I don't want the mesh to stick to the body in those locations. So I know I'm gonna have to delete planes anyway. And now back in edit mode, I have the new mesh from Retopaflow and you can see how I extrude new planes from the mesh. So I tie the, I tie the two sides together to make new edges at the bottom. And then I grab and extrude those to make the hanging parts of the clothing. So then I get it all cleaned up. And exactly like the female, I brush down the body hairs so that they don't clip through the clothing. And then I cleaned up the um, edges so it looks like the top of the hair kind of overhangs the clothing a little bit. And that way it's not so obvious that I just trimmed some of them. Now I mark some more seams and define a few different materials and send this clothing to Substance Painter as well. This one I went with a metallic band for the top, put a little bit of a corrosion effect on, and then I used this nice little snake scale texture. And this is all procedural in Substance Painter. You can also you can also 
manually paint all of this so that it doesn't look as uniform. Um, but for now, this effect was really cool for how simple it is. And then I added some rust to the interface on both sides of these materials so that they kind of blended together a little better. And then export these textures into a folder that I can access in Blender. And again, for each one of the material slots, hit Control Shift T with the principal shader selected, and Blender will add the materials. So there were the two next to each other. So the last part here, I'm adding a landscape with a little simple water plane, just for a little more interest. And then I added a kind of rock ground material to the plane. Now it's time to set up and pose the characters. So once I get them in place, I start to set up the camera and pose the characters. So I got some general posing done first just to decide how I want them to stand. And then I set up the initial location of the camera just to point at them to see how much of the screen they fill and so on. Here you can see my character doing the robot while I pose him. Okay, so once the general poses are done, I can have an idea of what the scene will look like. So then I set up a path, which is just a circle for the camera to follow. So you can see that it rotates around a path. And then I add an empty to the scene right between these two characters and tell the camera to always face the empty. So what that will allow me to do is keep the camera aligned, basically perpendicular to the circle looking inward at the characters. And you should be able to see that here in just a second. Then you can just keyframe locations along the path. And that is how you define the speed of the camera. So I just have it do one rotation in about 400 frames. And you can see these characters do have a little bit of cloth simulation. I didn't cover it in this video, although I did show it for just a few seconds. And here are the characters. They're looking pretty cool now. These are obviously pretty simple clothing, but um, this is how you would do it for any type. You would just maybe add more extra pieces or more um, bumpiness or displacement to the meshes. But yeah, these two with their clothes now and they're fully animated and rigged, they are ready to go for some final scene rendering. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what I should have them do. Thanks.